Five Year Mission, the podcast, episode eight. Five Year Mission, the podcast is proud to have Fansets as its presenting sponsor. Fansets is the place for amazing pin collectibles with over 200 officially licensed Star Trek pins and new releases every month. Month, 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 month. <laughs> Stay tuned for a special discount code good on your next order at fansets.com. Com, Fansets. Yeah. Our pins have character. character and we thank character, those characters over at Fansets for sponsoring each and every episode of Five Year Mission, the podcast. Cast, 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 cast. What's wrong with you? By now you figured out that this is the Five Year Mission podcast. Welcome to Five Year Mission, the podcast. Tonight, we are going to be discussing uh, how Deep Space Nine is awesome and you are wrong <laughs> for not thinking that it's awesome. I've been seeing a lot of hate of it online a lot lately. That's because you're always on Star Trek <laughs> posting. That's true. That's true. And there's been a lot of Deep Space Nine hate over there. I, I feel like most of that's ironic, though. A lot of it is, but, you know, we're, we're here to defend it because, I mean, don't tell anybody, whisper it, but... Within this band, I think it's outvoted that Deep Space Nine is probably our favorite series. Well, yeah, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. So, so don't, don't tell anyone that a TOS band's favorite series is Deep Space Nine. Nobody listening to this ever repeat that. I am Andy Fark. I will be one of the hosts tonight. Mike Rittenhouse already spoke. <sighs> you interrupted me. I was going to say I'm Mike Rittenhouse. Oh, well, you can do it now. Or I'm I'm Michael Rittenhouse. Ooh, you're getting fancy on me. Yeah. I will never be Andrew Fark on this one. Nah. But tonight we are also joined by a fellow podcaster, uh, Mr. Jacob Williams. Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, having me, uh, Mike and Andy. Really appreciate it. Dude, what's funny is that since we started the podcast, we were like, Mike has been telling me, he was like, he was like, well, once we start covering deep, some steep, deep space nine stuff, we need to have my buddy Jake on because wow. he loves deep space nine. I do love deep space nine is, is definitely my uh, personal favorite. Uh, it wasn't quite the, the, the series that got me in there. I mean, I came in with next generation, like everybody else, like but, a, uh, like a lot of the yeah, kids of the eighties yeah. and nineties. Yeah. But next gen was already off the air when I got into Star Trek. So Deep Space Nine was that new one. And I got in um, around season three or four when they're like ramping up to the, to the Dominion War, which... Oh, well, you came yeah. in at the perfect point. Then. Exactly. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, but, but even going back and when you, I mean, to me personally, and I know we'll get into more of this later, but um, uh, I, I think TNG is a really good series. It's probably mm -hmm. the more important from like a critical acclaim standpoint. Oh, but, definitely. But Deep Space Nine, to me, fires on all eight cylinders pretty consistently. Whereas, I mean, you got to admit, there's a lot of uh, chaff, you know, with uh, TNG, you know. So yeah, I mean, because that, I know that that's was a controversial opinion, you know. Mostly in the early seasons, but uh, there are still some stinkers in the last couple seasons of TNG. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, but well, with every series though, Sub Rosa. Sure. Yeah. Well, see, like, <laughs> it took me a while to get into to TNG because um, I I didn't really get introduced to Star Trek until I was in like tenth grade, and my math teacher um, was really into Star Trek, and she was the one encouraging me because I was more of a Star Wars fan at the time, um, like most of us. Yeah, and it didn't help that all the episodes I had happened to catch on TV were like just the the the, the turd episodes, like. <laughs> I remember being at the bowling alley and up on screen was the episode, which is the one where like uh, Deanna's like trying to solve the mystery, like through psychic visions or something like in season where, six where, or seven. Were there were there like two lights that she was floating towards? Maybe. No, this is the one where like <laughs> someone had killed someone on the Enterprise and buried their body in the bulkhead. Oh, or, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 not good with episode titles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, neither am I. I mean, but uh, I saw that when I saw the one like in at the bowling alley, the one where uh, Crusher and Picard are stuck on the planet and they can like hear each other's thoughts. Yeah, yeah. so it wasn't it wasn't like Best of Both Worlds was on at the bowling alley, <laughs> right? So. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you're like, uh, ooh, why, why is why is the captain all of a sudden yeah. part robot? <laughs> why has he got a laser sight on, him, on his face? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Jacob, when yep. you're not 
uh, on here discussing Deep Space Nine mm. with uh, two dudes from a Star Trek band. Uh, what is it? What, what's the podcast you do all about? Okay, so uh, yeah, I do the uh, Punisher Body Count uh, podcast. Uh, you can find us at uh, PunisherBodyCount.com. As you can imagine, it's all about the uh, Marvel character, uh, Marvel Comics character, uh, the Punisher, aka Frank Castle. And we discuss everything. I mean, we cover the new comics. We cover the old comics. We cover all the incarnations, whether it's Punisher 2099, Cosmic Ghost Rider, all that. We've discussed the movies, the Netflix TV show. Which I was so disappointed when that didn't, when all the Marvel shows got canceled off of Netflix. Well, no, the the rumor is that they're going to be on Disney+. Plus. I know, I've heard. Yeah, I I'm hope so. Yeah, I'm waiting so, for it. You, you even talked about now. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> no, but we have talked about Dolph Lundgren quite a bit, and we've actually had uh, Tom Jane on the show oh. uh, early on, and we've had a bunch of the uh, Punisher writers on. Like we've talked to uh, Greg Ruck, uh, uh, Steve Grant, and uh, a couple of the other newer writers that no one's probably heard of. So, um, <laughs> not that pretty too many people have heard of Steve Grant, but he was a pretty prolific writer back in the eighties, you know. So, so for all you Punisher fans out there, remember that. Yeah, and if that doesn't hook you, I mean, it's really just three hours of uh, of toilet jokes, and I know <laughs> we are well accustomed <laughs> to those over yeah. here. So you know, come for the Punisher, stay for the jokes. <laughs> Which is how I describe our shows most of the time: come for the songs, stay for the jokes that go on for way too long in between songs because <laughs> they keep giving me a microphone. But anyway, going back, speaking of TNG, mm -hmm. uh, we got Picard coming up. January twenty oh, yeah, third. About that. Oh my gosh! That'd be just the two short previews alone that we've got to see. Mm. Like I could not be more excited for this series. Yeah, it's going to finally make me uh, break down and get that free CBS All Access trial. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think a lot of people are going to be doing. Oh, of course. It's, I mean, if they if Discovery hadn't already hooked them, I mean, like a lot of people have not. There, there's there's people out there that have not enjoyed Discovery. I enjoy it immensely. So, I mean, I've had CBS All Access since it first came out. Mm -hmm. I have not. There hasn't been a lull. Thank you, NFL season, for mm -hmm. showing all the CBS games. <laughs> so I've been keeping it. And I've done I'm on my third rewatch of Discovery right now. But January 23rd, we finally get Picard and we know that Riker is going to be in there. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, Deanna Troy, Troy is going to be in there. Uh, we know that seven of nine. Yeah, Jerry of Ryan. All yeah. things. Mm -hmm. which was the big weird reveal in that one. And we also recently found out that Hugh of the Borg, or I guess formerly of the Borg. Right. I guess you could say. It's looking like he's going to be like a main protagonist in this series. It could be. I mean, based on the uh, trailers, it's actually not funny that Seven of Nine is in there. Because, I mean, it does look like they're going with uh, Borg as some sort of yeah. antagonist in the background. And it totally makes sense that you would take the two other characters that had been assimilated right. to put with Picard, who, spoiler alert, was assimilated, you know. Yeah, yeah, I would hope it's not really a spoiler by this point, right. but you never know who's coming into which series when. 30-year-old spoiler. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, Jaws pops out of the water at some point, so watch out, people. Right. Vader's Luke's father. <gasps> oh, oh, man. What? Uh, this is going to be released uh, the Monday before the new short trek premieres too. Mm -hmm. uh, Children of Mars, which is the final short trek of the short trek season before Picard premieres. And apparently it's going to be a tie in to the Picard series. It's called Children of Mars that airs on January 9th, which is the, the Thursday after this comes out. Uh, the quick synopsis of it is 12 year old classmates, Kima and Lil find themselves at odds with each other on a day that will change their lives forever. Have you guys watched the watched the preview for it yet? For the short tracks? Yeah. No, I haven't. You Actually, haven't I didn't even know short tracks were a thing until I was listening to this podcast. To oh. Try and get prepared. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, see, I, with the Picard stuff coming out, I mean, I heard it announced like six months ago or whatever. Yeah. Saw a few interviews with Patrick Stewart talking about it. But, uh, you know, I didn't want anything spoiled, so I've been purposely not following it and i mean uh discovery didn't really do anything for me with the advertisements or anything so mm. it's not like i've checked it out i feel like a terrible star trek fan here but uh 
<laughs> yeah, I, I just learned about short trek. Today. Well, you're you're not alone because there's there's a lot of people that haven't really glommed on to it yet and uh, like subscribe to CBS All Access to be able to see mm-hmm. all the short treks or go through and watch Discovery. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm waiting for Picard, and then I'll get the one week free trial binge. Mm-hmm. whatever trek is on there that i haven't seen yet right and then decide if i'm keeping it or not mm-hmm. so there's a but the short treks have been great uh for the most part and i mean there's a couple in there that i've been kind of like Meh. here's two things that i really like about what we've seen so far with the trailers oh uh, one is that i'm glad because this is the first time we're seeing the series like from a tv show or movie level going forward and was that the 21st, 24th century timeline? Yeah. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a prequel, which is pretty much right. all we've been getting. But we, we haven't had anything since Nemesis. Right. Right. So I'm excited about that. And two, even though he's the legendary Jean-Luc Picard, it looks like he goes to Starfleet Command and he's like, I got this important mission. And they're like, go home, go old man. Home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, like, you don't run anything anymore. Go grow your grapes <laughs> can, and bottle some wine. Can, yeah. Kind of the way he's treated in all good things. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> they, they basically do the uh, 24th century version of OK Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're kind of shunning him out of Starfleet, kind of like how Cisco was in, right. in The Emissary. Pretty much. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a good segue right there for our topic tonight. Because we are discussing Deep Space Nine and why you're wrong about why you don't like it. Yes. <laughs> my elevator pitch for Deep Space Nine, because this is the number one complaint I've heard my whole life, mm. is uh, they don't go anywhere or do anything. Yeah. First of all, which is just wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And two, Cisco is so awesome, the aliens come to him. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you were when you were in school, the cool kid was the one where you went to his house, right? Like, right. If, if you were going to someone else's house, you weren't the cool kid. Right. He has a Super Nintendo. <laughs> his mom gets good snacks. Yeah. No, but instead you get, there's a school, there's a bar ran by some shysty dude, Mm -hmm. there's a (laughs) shapeshifter. You got freedom fighters, you got the, you got those, well, they get, they get the two best aliens they introduced in uh, Next Generation, the Ferengi and the Cardassians. Yeah. Yeah. So I put a quick little call out this afternoon, uh, just kind of getting to see, you know, like, um, I asked the question, you know, tell us what, what you start off with after telling someone about, uh, Deep Space Nine and your first sentence is Deep Space Nine is better than you think. Uh, Jonathan Hamilton, one of our, looks like new, newer listeners, uh, he said the secondary characters have more growth than the main characters in other, other, other Trek series. Oh, uh, absolutely. Just yeah, very I true. that one's pretty accurate. That was one of the things I was going to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. One of our oldest fans, I believe he is from England, Richard Jenkinson. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said it was the first Trek series that had story arcs instead of just like two parters, things yeah, like that. I yeah. mean, it was it was almost a series long arc once we get to like what season Around end of season, season three, two? season three, season four. Yeah, the yeah. Se- from yeah. the season finale of season two. I mean, we get a pretty much a series long arc. Yeah. Uh Miss Debbie Ranky. <laughs> we love you, Debbie. Uh, she says the long story arcs allowed for so much more character development. We had time to get to know them, love some and hate a few. I'm looking at you, Kai Wynn. (laughs) (laughs) Also, as with all Trek, they found ways to work in commentary about the current issues. The big difference was being at a space station and not warping off to a new planet each week, which Jake, you, you discussed already. Yeah, that, that seems like an almost a number one complaint from people that have nothing it's, else to complain about. It's just a soap opera in space and they don't go anywhere. I saw that co- exact comment today, actually. Yeah. That's so weird. And, and I have to be honest, back in the 90s when it was on the air and I was watching Next Generation, I did not watch Deep Space Nine. And I said that myself. Those really? words came out of my mouth. So, so eventually you were a convert then. Well, yeah, I, I I actually I didn't start watching Deep Space Nine until it would have been two, like 2007. Oh, wow. And really? That long? Yeah. Okay. Well, it was like 2017 for me. Wow. I watched because um, that's like right before I met you. I just figured you were like an OG DS9 <laughs> fan. I, I was I was a big fan of Trek for a long time. Sure. I, I liked original series. I liked Next Gen. I saw most of Voyager when it was on. Uh, I, and I'd watched a few, a couple episodes of D space nine mm-hmm. and I watched the first like four or five episodes of enterprise when it came out and I didn't give it a chance either. 
because of Bacula, isn't it? <laughs> no, it, it was it was because of uh, it's been a long road. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oof. Um, but yeah, I didn't give Deep Space Nine a chance at all, and 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 so finally, uh, I I've told this story on previous podcasts mm. about how I got into Trek and yeah. started obsessingly watching all of it. So when I got through all of Next Gen, D Space Nine was the next one. So I started watching it and I was in probably season five when I made the decision that I wanted to write Star Trek songs. Like mm -hmm. D Space Nine is the one that actually really said, like made me think, you know, I want to make music about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love all of Star Trek, so I'm just going to start at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And so, I don't know if I'm about to embarrass myself here, but <laughs> you're actually the only five-year mission member to actually mention Deep Space Nine in one of your songs, right? Like with your Trouble with Tribbles. Uh... I don't think anybody else has referenced it. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, in my in my Tribbles song, there's a subtle reference mm -hmm. to Trials and Tribulations. Mm -hmm. I only got one more comment from uh, Michael Stepniak on Twitter. Uh, he said the first episode, colon, an exploration and debate on the linear versus nonlinear nature of human existence and experience, a conversation between a human and beings that some believe are God and others believe are aliens. DS9 is a philosophy, philosophy class, not a TV show. It's the best. Which, I mean, it, did, it could be argued that pretty much all of Star Trek is a philosophy class, mm -hmm. but uh, Deep Space Nine really... Yeah. Tackled a lot of issues. I mean, they attacked, they, when they uh, discussed homelessness, they discussed PTSD. Uh, Jim um, Crow. Jim Crow, exactly. Yeah. Oh, which I, in my notes, I have that, mm -hmm. I have that one listed. Um, let's see, lots of, of course, war. Mm -hmm. um, uh, having to make really tough decisions. Sometimes they're not going to be the best decisions, mm -hmm. but overall, it's like the whole needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few thing. Right. Especially Cisco. Mm -hmm. Alcoholism. <laughs> alcoholism yes what about just fathers and sons yeah exactly yeah. which we, we we hadn't had before because mm -hmm. there was there was no like real close familial relationships before this and plus you get to see a single dad trying to hold down a job and make sure his mm -hmm. son wasn't turning out just to be a big old butthole yeah not an absentee father like kirk Exactly. And Picard, <laughs> and yeah, and, and well, and a, but <laughs> and and Janeway in Paris, and, yeah. and also Worf. But oh yeah, then, you can't forget about Worf. Then yeah. That gets addressed in DS Nine. Yeah, that didn't turn out too good. Yeah. No, oh Alexander. But hey, it's still about fathers, right? You know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so they, so they tackled both sides of mm. being a good dad and being a pretty crappy yeah. dad. You know, I gotta say. And, and stop me if this is on your list, but that episode, the uh, the visitor, which is what season. Oh yeah, four that's episode, that's on there. Oh man, I cried like a baby the first time I saw that. <laughs> oh no, we're well, uh, we, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll save it for yeah, we get we'll there. get yeah. we'll get to that one. I yeah. have like 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 I said when I texted you guys earlier, I have like eighteen episodes like of oh yeah note that I just kind of went through, <laughs> and I was just like, oh we got to we got to hit it hit these mm -hmm. and just say a little bit about each one just because they're. Maybe we should just uh, go down the list. Yeah, and, let's and go down the I'm list. I'm sure each one will probably in inspire some things that we want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, of course, season one, episode one, Emissary. Mm -hmm. It's We get introduced to Deep Space Nine. We get especially such a killer opening scene where you get to see how Cisco ends up on DS9. Mm -hmm. he, got, he has to watch his wife die. Yeah, by it's Jean, by Jean Luc, exactly. Yeah, Jean Luc yeah. Picard. It was it the Battle of Wolf three five nine. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, arguably the best uh, opening of any of the shows. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not the strongest first season, but I think strong, probably the strongest first episode of, of any of the series. Is way stronger than uh, Encounter at Farpoint. Oh, Encounter yeah. at Farpoint yeah. got it, real boring real quick. Yeah, I mean it. It, it was decent, but. Yeah, emissary. It introduces you to the characters a lot better than Encounter mm -hmm. Farpoint mm -hmm. does. Yeah, you know it doesn't. In, Encounter Farpoint feels like two episodes crammed together. 
Yeah. Well, it is two episodes. It is two episodes. I know, I know. I I, I realize that. (laughs) It literally is. Edit that out to make yourself sound smart. (laughs) No, leave leave, leave that one. You know, it it kind of feels like they they filmed that whole, like, uh, cue thing, and they just didn't have anything else to do. So they just made up this other part about this (laughs) space station. (laughs) But uh, I think another difference is with the encounter at Farpoint, you just have these characters that we're just introducing and maybe there's a little bit of uh, what's going on here with uh, Data because it's a completely new character type for the series. Mm-hmm. But with Deep Space Nine, you get in there right away with characters with attitude. With oh, yeah. Ma- I mean, with, you, uh, you, you Major did, Kira. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you, yeah. you, you got to hit, hit the ground running mm-hmm. with everybody on that ship. Yeah. Well, in that first interaction between the two of them where she basically says, are you just one of these like Federation officers that doesn't want to get your hand dirty? He immediately picks up a bulkhead, throws it and shows her his hands. Like, yeah. yeah, that was a great tone. Yeah. Setter right I, I, there. I'm here to help. Right. <laughs> Even though he's the reluctant, like he's yeah. not like Riker, who's this super ambitious uh, person eager to, to serve and have his own command. Yeah. I mean, he's dealing with the loss of his wife being the single dad. Yeah. Um, he's even like considering leaving Starfleet. Right. But mm-hmm. he says he's going to finish the job he's told to do. Right. Before he does that. Mm-hmm. And he even tells Picard that he plans on resigning yeah. and, to, and to find another uh, uh, commander because he's yeah. only a commander at the time. So, exactly. The first person in command that's not a captain. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah, this yeah, I think this is the the, first, the, the this only is the one first who time. starts out not, not as a, a captain. captain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, which you know brings up the point of like the characters on D Space 9 growing. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, someone mentioned that in the comments that you were reading about uh Oh the, yeah, kind of like the the, the secondary characters yeah, have like, so much development. Like not just the main characters but even the supporting cast. Yeah. Like it has the biggest supporting cast of any of the shows. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And the characters I mean, like you know, we talked about this in the the, said, the Nog episode. I yeah. mean, how much did that character change from the first season to the last? Yeah, season? we we see him in emissary getting thrown thrown in jail. Yeah, for stealing, <laughs> and he's just a, a little brat. And yeah. by the end of the series, he's a hero. Exactly. And, you know, and, and like name any character on any of the other shows that that changes that much. That I mean, you much. know, Data gets some feelings. Okay. Woo. He yeah. can he can turn a chip on w- and off. Worf's forehead changes a little bit, <laughs> and his haircut. <laughs> his his haircut changes a little yeah. bit. Riker grows a beard. <laughs> well, how about this? <laughs> Speaking of side characters, who who do you think grows more, uh, Professor Moriarty or uh, Vic? Vic, absolutely. Yeah. Which I mean, I like, again, I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Mm. I like the character Vic Fontaine. Oh, he's a great character. Yeah. And I will I will defend that. <laughs> I don't hate Vic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know you don't hate Vic. But I mean, especially for a hologram character, mm-hmm. like a hollow sweet central character. He has a lot of character development, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah I absolutely. mean, he, he starts out as just kind of an interactive program. Yeah. And then, you know, then he be, then they turn him on 26 hours a day mm-hmm. and he learns what it's like to like be tired. Yeah. And you know, to. Beat. Yeah, yeah to, learn to how to pay his taxes. Yeah, pay his taxes and <laughs> right. and have have friends and and right. he finds out what it's like to have his bar taken over by mm, by the mob by the mob and mm. yeah. And then by the end, he's given out a great. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this, but the the whole uh, you know, hey, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, but at least you're in the game. Yeah, you, I I, oh, I quoted him on the "There's Only a Paper Moon" episode. Yeah. 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 It's like yeah, they say yeah. This uh, you're either in or you're out, but uh, but at least you you're playing the cards that you're dealt. Yeah, yeah. But you know the characters like you know Kai Wen and oh, Dukat God. and Dumar. We will and, we will get great them. characters because you hate them so much, right? Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and just like the, I mean, there's at least there's at least twenty characters on that show mm-hmm. from like for throughout the whole series that continue to grow and. You know, and none of the, none of the other shows have that. Like the, at most, they've got a character that that comes back like three or four times. Next one I had on my list was a uh, season two episode two, the Circle. If you guys remember that one, that was when there was like the, um, like the uh, terrorist faction on Bajor. Yeah, the Circle trilogy. Yeah, 
which was it's, a great like, trilogy. Yeah, again. And, and like we were saying earlier, the other shows at most had like two parters and that, like mm-hmm. that was the first time. And I think in Star Trek where they had a, a three parter. Yeah. <laughs> well, and not to mention, I mean, <clears throat> so you got the uh, development with the, uh, the Bajorans and uh, Kira, but what about that episode where that uh, Cardassian like uh, bookkeeper like gets plastic surgery and poses as the general of that uh, labor camp yeah. because he's got survivor's guilt. Like, I don't right. Know he, he, he wants to be persecuted right. and trial like mm. tried for, yeah. for the crimes because he's mm. a Cardassian. I, right. I deserve this. Yeah. yeah. And even though he didn't really commit any of the heinous crimes. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't hands on in like the death of these people, but, but he, knew but he, he, was, he didn't put a stop to it. So right. he, yeah, he, he didn't, he know. didn't speak up. Yeah. Mm. That, like the, none of the other shows would do episodes mm. like that. You, you no. know, usually nothing that deep. No. Next one I got up is a uh, season two, episode 15 paradise. Cisco and O'Brien are dead down on that planet. That's shunned technology. And they keep throwing them in like the box. Mm-hmm. because he just refuses to yeah. be, be like, uh, hey, you know, not all these people want to live like this. If they want to leave, they should be free to leave. Right. The first time I was watching through Deep Space Nine, that was one of the episodes that really stood out to me. And I, I was like, man, you know, Cisco's awesome. Well, because mm-hmm. you, you get to see how much character he has. Like, yeah. he has morals and he'll stand behind them, like, steadfastly stand behind them. Mm-hmm. And, and there were there were aspects of the episode that surprised me. Like, as much as I love Star Trek, a lot of it's very predictable. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're watching an episode and, uh, you know, there are definitely some stuff in Deep Space Nine the first time you're watching it that you don't see coming. Mm-hmm. You're not expecting. Mm-hmm. And there was definitely some, some things in that episode that I wasn't expecting well and i don't know if it's the uh character or uh, avery brooks's performance but um he has a way of being able to put a point across from the perspective of a starfleet officer but somehow put his personal opinion in there so you Mm -hmm. you know he means business when it's time to but then you also know how he really feels like that episode where um what is it there's that genetically created alien and then there's people hunting it and they come on the station oh, yeah. and, and O'Brien's trying to free the alien. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Cisco's like, hey, you know, prime directive, you know, you got to do this. And then O'Brien is sabotaging everything and Odo's got to go arrest him. And then he's getting ready to leave the uh, the the bridge or command center, where, where they call it, ops. 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 And, uh, and Cisco's like, there's no hurry. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, you know, and o- Odo's like, OK, yeah. And he just <laughs> casually, <Understood. laughs> casually strolls there. So, I mean, and then there's the other episode where uh, this is later on in the series where um, Worf helps out uh, Jadzia in direct violation of orders. And Cisco's got to reprimand him and he's giving him the third degree. And then just and just after he dismisses him, he's like, and on the personal note, I would have done the exact same thing <laughs> he did. <laughs> you know, so hey, anyway, Avery Brooks is pimp in that role. Oh yeah, I mean, especially once I, I always tell people like midway midway through season three, once the head is shaved and the goatee is grown. Mm-hmm. In in uh, the episode uh, Paradise is the name, right? Yeah, like uh, that that the main lady, mm-hmm. uh, the in charge of everyone on the planet. Yeah. Um, like she's a great example of of like the villains in G Space Nine. Yeah, like I mean, she's not necessarily a villain but but right. like protagonist protagonist antagonist uh, and, antagonist antagonist yeah. whatever yeah. Well, i got those mixed up <laughs> <laughs> leave but, that in make me but, look stupid but like i'm i'm watching it you know and like you just you hate her like mm-hmm. you know yeah. before you even know the heinous stuff that she's done like you're you're just like man this lady sucks well mm-hmm. and they do that so well because there's so many characters you hate but not because they suck as characters but mm-hmm. just because they make you hate them. Like Again, they're supposed to be hated. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I always said, oh, we, will, we will get into Kai if, Wynn. If, if, <laughs> if I met Kai Wynn in person, like the actress, mm-hmm. like I've heard from m- many people that she's like the sweetest, yeah. nicest mm-hmm. person. And, but like, I just, I just know that if I meet her in person, I am going to hate her. <laughs> <laughs> like she played that part so well. Yeah. Oh yeah. That I just, I can't picture her. I've, I've seen her in other movies and, and mm-hmm. other things. And like, I'm just disgusted by her presence. Right. <laughs> who would you, uh, who, who's the guy that plays uh, Gold Ducat? Mark. Uh, uh, Mark Alimo. Alimo. Yeah. 
Would you hate him more or uh, Kai Wynn? Oh, Kai Wynn. Oh, okay. no, definitely Kai Wynn. By far. Oh, she by, is, a, by she a is, mile. <laughs> you know, and, and she's technically not, I mean, she is a villain, mm-hmm. but not. I mean, well, she's, she's the antagonist. Yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. like, to me, she is the the worst villain in that series. Well, like, I mean, she's just a typical politician in that political framework. Right. And she's super passive aggressive too. Oh, yeah, and just of every every comment's a backhanded comment and mm-hmm. she's always out for herself. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. Like I've known far too many people in li- in real life sure. like that, where I'm just like, I don't even want to be around this person. I just need to cut them out of my life somehow. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Kai Win, I just I want to punch her in the face. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah. What's your next episode? Next one I got on uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, season two, episode 19, Blood Oath, with Kor Koloth yep. and Kang coming back. And uh, Jadzia has to bring Curzon back up to the forefront in her mind because mm. she swore an oath to go after the albino, which was the sworn enemy of Kor, Koloth, and Kang. No, great episode. Plus, uh, you get to see, I think it was Kang. No, it was Kor. The, when he was first meeting Jadzia, he was like, Curzon, my old friend. How, how are you, man? And, she, and she's like, it's actually Jadzia now. Jadzia, my old friend. How's my girl? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, that's very progressive for a Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's the 24th century, you know. Exactly. He's, he's woke. He's to- he to- <laughs> totes woke. Totes woke. Next one I got on my list, season two, season finale, episode 26, The Jim Hadar. Because mm-hmm. that's where Deep Space Nine really starts to jump off. Mm-hmm. Which, when you first watch that episode, if you know nothing about the rest of the series, mm-hmm. you have no idea that, <laughs> that it's introducing you to the such, rest of the series yeah such a major and i don't even know if they knew that honestly at the time because it felt like a very normal star trek kind of episode mm-hmm. where cisco and uh, here's your villain for next season he goes to the uh, gamma quadrant yeah, yeah. they they go he goes on, there so i want to break this myth Mm-hmm. That they don't go anywhere. <laughs> right, do right. They 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 go on a little camping trip right. with, with the kids, you know, Quark yeah. and Cisco, Jake and Nog, and you know, there's some aliens that show up and yeah. they they get captured and <clears throat> you know the the kids take the runabout and kind of save the day or whatever right. and. Yeah. You know, it's like a almost like a next gen episode. Yeah, yeah. It could, like which could have easily just been like a weird bottle episode. It's like, mm. well, by those aliens that we met on this random planet in another quadrant this week. Mm. But no, it turned out to be like, yeah, the, some of the best storytelling. The, the in Star Horta Trek. and the Jim Hadar, like mm. the the two main Dominion, yeah, species that they have to deal with for the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which which means we we start getting uh, Jeff Combs as a regular too. Yeah. Oh. Man. And then how interesting was it that because we've had genetically enhanced uh, you know villains species and, I mean, and stuff all yeah. throughout sci-fi and all that. And the Jim and are definitely enhanced you know mm-hmm. strength combat skills and all that. But their main genetic enhancement is that they're addicted to the Ketracel white. The right. white. Yeah. Which Just I, time. Yeah, which uh, I don't think I've seen in too many sci-fi, you know, no. a race of people specifically addicted to a chemical. Which which makes them yeah. fight. Yeah. Because wasn't there, that, that was actually military experiments within the American army at one point, wasn't oh, it? Probably. And a great thing about Deep Space Nine and that whole story arc with the Jim Hadar is in other shows, even like in the other Star Trek shows, all of that would take place in one episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they would meet this species, find out they were genetically enhanced to be addicted to something and then they would somehow solve it yeah the bones right. would cure it yeah they would yeah. cure it and then you know hey you know, we made your life better and now we're going on our way to meet mm-hmm. new people next week mm-hmm. and on d space nine they never resolved that no. well no because they were like <laughs> the, well plus they were like too strong to like defeat completely so they were like no we need to get out of here mm-hmm. which just kind of left the door open well, for them to further for them to come back sure. again and again well, and they do have an episode where Bashir, who's supposed to be... He tries yes, to resolve He tries it. to, but it's like... But he, he finds out that it's just that one specific guy just happened to right. have a flaw yeah. that made him not addicted to it, and mm-hmm. it's not something that you can cure. Mm-hmm. Right. They're they're addicted. They're completely addicted. Uh, well, and it's also nice to see one of, the, uh, 
one of the all star main cast characters fail? Like, yeah, how yeah. often does and Bones who's, or who's uh, genetically Beverly? enhanced himself? And right, he, and he still well, we, can't do, fix we, him. we don't know that. Oh, yet, wait, spoiler alert. Yeah. True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, like uh, with the Dominion and their genetic enhancing, like I, I love the the little jokes they make about the Horta sometimes in the episodes, Vorta. like, huh, Horta. That, oh, I said Horta, didn't I? <laughs> the Horta's I, I said the that earlier series. too. I know. I, yeah. I thought you did, but I was like, maybe I just heard him wrong. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not talking about rock monsters. No, it's yeah. Zavorta. Rock monster. I just assumed you knew something I didn't. No, so. no. I, I just, I, <laughs> I, I accidentally. Too, too many Star Trek species that sound the same. Sure. Vorta, the the thing that like with them, the jokes they make in some of the episodes, like that they don't have, they can't taste. Mm -hmm. You know, or and like the and they they're like, well, if they're gods, why would they? give you that flaw yeah you know and i just love like when they bring that up and you know and, and they're there's like well i don't know there are gods yeah so we don't question <laughs> we them. yeah we don't question them and i love that they're genetically modified too but they're like perfectly genetically modified diplomats yeah because mm -hmm. i remember there's an episode where one of the vorta uh i forget his name Wei Yung. just yeah. drinks like this big drink he's like <laughs> oh that is wildly toxic yes <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was the the way you like number eight because like yeah. nine nine had already been created yeah. and they were like he was like basically going rogue. He's like I'm defecting from the Dominion. Right. I'm just gonna start acting like everybody else. <laughs> I don't need. I don't have to put up with this crap anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and doesn't like Dakot break one of the Wayne's necks or something like? Oh that? yeah. Yeah. Just for fun. Yeah. It's great. And w then like Worf, the Worf kills one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So then, like the following day, the replacements there, and they're yeah. like, "We're never ending." <laughs> it's like, wait, I thought I killed you. Yeah. I'm way number eleven. Yeah, he's the he's, he's the, the uh, he's the Kenny of the series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they killed Wayun. You bastards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next one I have on my list is one of my favorites, mainly because we get one of my favorite lines and one of the most memeable things. Uh, the season three civil defense. It's the one where uh, O'Brien and Jake and Cisco are caught in like the mining part of DS9. Oh yes, and they set off the <laughs> alarm, and that's where we get attention, the Bajoran workers. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of my favorite episodes, mainly because it's just like a. It's basically Jake O'Brien and Cisco doing like uh, like an uh, like an escape room. Mm -hmm. It's like how are we gonna figure this one out? <laughs> and they're like trying to take apart all the machines, trying to figure out how to disengage like the self destruct mode. No, no, it wasn't self destruct. They were gonna be releasing toxic gases yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And so they had to figure all that out, and they're like climbing through like the little shoots and everything. <laughs> I, I love when Ducat shows up. And he tries to to shut it down. Oh, yeah. And then the other Cardassian comes on and he's like, I see that you've defected, Ducat. <laughs> <laughs> but no, because I, I love it because like Ducat shows up and he's just like leisurely like, oh, I see you set off one of the one of the trip alarms. And he's just like going to the replicator and making like a drink and everything. Let's see what we can do about this. And just kind of twiddle in his thumbs. Do, 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 do. Oh, your captain may die. Oh, shucks. <laughs> let, I, let me see if I remember that code. <laughs> Ducat was such a great foil. He's awesome. He's like, yeah. he's definitely one of like my favorite, like main Star Trek villains because he was played wonderfully and apparently is also kind of a dick in real life. <laughs> According. Well, he's he's kind of just an old man anyway. So. Now he is, yeah. <laughs> but I, he, even then, he was kind of older. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have yeah. you guys met him in any of the shows y'all done? I think we briefly we've, met him. We've we've met him. Uh, I mean, uh, there's very few people that are you know main and recurring characters that we have not had mm -hmm. at least a conversation One, with. Yeah, one quick little interaction at least. I mean, even like Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, we really? Got to, we yeah. got to. That's me, awesome. me and her in we passing real quick and shook our hands. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was definitely one of my favorite episodes, especially because of the attention Bajoran workers. <laughs> and then they were all like pre-recorded and like every single time, like the timer would go off and be like, I wish you would come to your senses, but <laughs> you haven't seemed to do that yet. So I'm going to give you just a little more time. It's like, oh. How convenient. Thanks, mm -hmm. plot device. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked. 
because you got Ducat being our sarcastic butthole. Oh, this is the one that I most often recommend uh, to people that are wanting to get into Deep Space Nine just to kind of see what the message was truly all about. Mm -hmm. And also, it turns out that as of the day that we are recording this episode, it is the anniversary of the first airing of this. 1995, Past Tense Part 1 premiered. It's the 25th anniversary. Yeah. And that is definitely one of my favorite episodes. I mean, it's uh, a fantastic episode. And it rings way too true for, yeah. tw well, now 2020. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, we only have four years until people are put in detention yeah. four, camps. Four, and... four, four more years until the bell riots, people. <laughs> let's yeah. let's start start doing better. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to, to the fashions of 2024, though. Yeah. It's, it's a little rough. <laughs> But, lots of drabs, uh, lots of drab browns and greens. Yeah. The last time I watched that episode, I just kept thinking to myself, if things get serious, how is anyone going to shoot anybody? Because they've pumped those shotguns so much, <laughs> that they have to be out of ammo. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it just seems like every time someone says something, as, well, as, especially especially the the main rioter with the hat. Yeah. I cannot remember his name for the life of me. Yeah, this is the, the, this is where we need Morehouse. Yeah, so he knows every character name. I want to say especially in big, that episode, but... that's his favorite episode. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite episodes. Tackles homelessness. Tackles mm -hmm. uh, class warfare. Yep. Um, just basically having good morals. Government uh, ineptitude. Exactly. Yeah. Which we have plenty of. Sure. And uh, well, that's a timeless yeah. theme. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like, well, they, that, that's the, that's another thing with Star Trek. I mean, they again, like, well, like Debbie mentioned in her comment on Facebook that you know they try to tackle the themes of the day, mm -hmm. and who knew that an episode from 1995 would still be ringing actually more true mm -hmm. today than it was in 1995. I mean, yeah, there was a big homeless ec epidemic and AIDS crisis and everything like that going on in 95, but it's just getting worse and worse and, you know, do better. Mm -hmm. Let's get this federation going. Yeah. Hard to argue with that. Also, yeah. Karen O'Brien bouncing through the different <laughs> eras. Oh, don't they go to like the, the, the hippies and they yeah. go like peace. Or yeah. Whatever. They beam out and they're like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> they flash the, the yeah. O'Brien yeah. and Kira both flash the peace <laughs> sign. Oh, it was so bad. I, I like when yeah. like, like like they beam in and someone walks up and Kira's like, I broke my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of O'Brien, way to take a uh, next gen uh, side character and make him awesome. Uh, exactly. Yeah. O'Brien is amazing. Yeah. Keiko is not. <laughs> yeah, they can't all be winners. You know? <laughs> That's true. I mean, it, good, good for him that he had... A good marriage and everything. Got a got a got a cute kid out of the deal. Two cute kids, right? Two cute kids by yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Which Worf delivered one. He did, didn't he? And he yeah. babysat him a couple times. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so he was more of a father to O'Brien's kids. Yep. In it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like Godfather, basically. Can't can't ship that kid off to the Rojinkos. <laughs> oh, ooh, shots fired on Worf. All right, next one I got is uh, about half the season later. Yeah, I think this is actually the uh, season finale, season three, episode 26, The Adversary, which is when Cisco gets his promotion to captain. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also find out that there's another changeling, and it's uh, trying to sabotage the Defiant. I right, well, succeeds in sabotaging the Defiant. Mm -hmm. I remember, I guess I, I, I guess I watched that in reruns, before 9-11 oh. when i watched that after 9-11 that was seeing that episode in a completely different lens mm -hmm. oh man like I, if you haven't seen it in a while definitely go back and watch it that, i don't know i mean if you haven't seen it in a pre and then post 9-11 world yeah. oh man oh it, it, it makes a big difference yeah because yeah, actually now i want to watch it again and kind right. of keep that in mind well especially when you get to the finale of that episode when the changeling who is impersonating O'Brien. So you have mm -hmm. uh, Cole Meany uh, uh, playing the changeling. And he's like, yeah, so how many of, how many of us do you think that there are? And he's like, there's just two of us. And like, you don't know if he's lying, but I mean, it, right. it, like, why do you take off all of your shoes? Because one flight ever 
had a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But now that's changed everything. And then that's exactly what was happening in the episode. Everyone was having to get random blood screens. Uh -huh. Even after uh, they were like, oh, we already figured out how to beat your blood test. Right. <sighs> like, oh, my God. Just all the liberties they were constantly sacrificing. And Cisco was like buying it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He was a true believer. And it took his dad to uh get him out of it but, you know what's uh, funny is that this episode was pre 9 11 too. yeah yeah oh that's Ooh. what i'm saying yeah. shades of the future mm. in the future yeah yeah it's a great interesting. episode interesting uh let's see next oh next one i got up season four episodes one and two the way of the warrior we get Worf back yeah <laughs> after uh no, I guess this was before. Uh, I guess it was after Generations. Yeah. Yeah. He, after he, Generations, yeah. before First Contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Michael Dorn needed a job. So, yeah. you know. Well, plus, I from from what I read, is that they kind of wanted to bring him in because, like, ratings weren't doing as well as they could. It's like, let's mm -hmm. bring back something familiar. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, they only had, like, the one, like, next-gen cameo, and that was on the season, the series premiere. Right. Well, the, there was also the episode called The Defiant. Mm -hmm. that had uh um data right no it had Riker. Riker. oh yeah okay. but it, it was thomas Riker. thomas Riker. pretending to be will Riker. yeah, yeah. jonathan frakes yeah, yeah. surprising well, we surprise had... enough i didn't have to have that on my list yeah we yeah. also had q show up in episode three i think yeah yeah who cisco punched in the face he did and then he never yeah. came back <laughs> <laughs> see picard you could have been ridiculed yeah. long ago all you had to do <laughs> I... At the risk of going into a, a tangent, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask this. Who do you think would win, like, in a boxing match, Picard or Cisco? Cisco. Yeah, I think Cisco By would far. I mean, that's tough, but have you ever seen Cisco take on Nausikans? <laughs> <laughs> well, but Picard, I mean, I'm obviously both of them in their prime. But P right? Picard yeah. was, t like, 20 when he took on the Nausikans. That's, that's true. true. Well, that's why I said both of them in their prime. Oh, in, yeah, in their, their prime? prime. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's a tough call. Yeah. I mean, I think both of them can easily kick Kirk's ass. Yeah. I, I, I think Kirk, Kirk is overblown. Kirk in his prime? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. In, in a straight boxing match, if there were, like, weird, random judo involved, if there were, if there was a wall he could bounce off of, Kirk might be able to take Okay, I mean, you, okay, you, you get all the standard MMA-type stuff, right? But, <laughs> okay. like, like, I feel like Picard or uh, Brooks Octagon? could, yeah. I feel like Picard or uh, Cisco could have beaten... Um, you know, each other just doing standard MMA. They mm -hmm. could beat the Gorn or whatever, but uh, Kirk had to be a bitch and get a gun. <laughs> to beat the Gorn? Yeah. yeah. Make his own gun. Yeah. So. <laughs> so so what you're saying is we've got this this boxing match between all of the captains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, every, we do one-on-one -on -one at, at different at, at, times. Everyone's yeah. staying away from Janeway because, you know. They can't hit a woman. They can't hit a woman. Yeah. yeah. But then she's going to come in and just start kicking some ass. Uh, you know, those the 24th are pretty <laughs> progressive, so you know, but Picard and Cisco are just going at it at each other's face, like mm. you know, yeah, and uh, you know, the archer's probably trying to speak diplomatically, like, mm. hey, let's let's not fight each other, you know. Meanwhile, Kirk's like over in the corner, like scraping little you know, mm. bam, bamboo shoots Sh together and shave, yeah. shaving, <laughs> shaving down minerals that he finds, he's yeah. he's, he's over there making his gun. Yeah, pretty but much. But then now you also have to add in Captain Georgiou, who I think could take all of them. Uh, maybe. Yeah, but it's Michelle Yao and yeah, Michelle <laughs> Yao. Oh, well, yeah, Michelle it, Yao. Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it Michelle Yeo in her prime or is it Captain well, Georgiou in, in her prime? They're all in her <laughs> prime. We're talking like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she's going to take out all of them. Oh, yeah, obviously. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't think about in, that. Yeah. In, 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 including both Pikes. <laughs> Both packs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, the Lord, well, I don't know. Lorca might be able to like come up with some weird cutting plan, but then he's just going to get tossed into an engine. Yeah. Spoilers. I think we're getting way off topic. Yeah, we're here. getting but, way but off topic. Cisco was the first one to just be like, pop. Yeah. Take yeah. care of the Q problem. Like, <laughs> yeah. I hey, hate you so Picard much. I'm going to punch you in the face. Me. Hey, Q, thump. Yeah. <laughs> Go bug Janeway and try and have babies with her. God, I forgot about that. And not lizard babies. Like yeah. you did with Paris. Q babies. Cubies. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, yeah. Next one. Season four. The Visitor. The Visitor. Oh, which we, we already touched on. But man, 
Whew. Man, I might not even be able to talk about it without choking up a little bit. <laughs> it is. A well, see, it meant, it meant a lot to me. So when I, I, I remember watching The Visitor when it aired. So maybe I was watching Trek a little bit sooner than I thought. Mm. But um, so uh, my mom passed away when I was like sixteen, oh, right? Okay. So and I was living with my dad. So I think it meant a little something extra to me, given my own yeah, uh, your own loss, family mm. life, but just. You kind of related to to, yeah. to them being a father and son. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. I mean, to to just think about, you know, he loves his dad so much that he's ruined his life. Yeah, and and they and they pointed out that like, yeah, it's sweet that you love your dad and you want to bring him back, but this is the order of things. Like, if, you, if, if as a parent, I mean, we're all three dads here, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, if we lost a child. That's tragic. That's worth ruining your life to try to fix that because that's not natural, right? Yeah. Like you're not supposed to outlive your kids, but this exactly. is the other way around. It, it everyone's telling him, "Hey, man, you got to move on with your life." He's a promising writer. He gets married. He's living the good life, but mm-hmm. just losing his dad, you know, at it, such an early age, he just can't deal with it. Well, then it's it's, the, it's made it's made even worse because he gets those little glimmers of hope because right. it, Cisco keeps phasing back in in the right. timeline. It's like I have to keep. Mm-hmm. Going after my dad and trying to figure something out because right. I see that I can somehow possibly get him back. Mm-hmm. And I've lived literally, I've lived literally my entire life mm-hmm. dedicated to getting my dad back yeah, just change, for a moment. Changing careers, like stopping yeah. being a writer, becoming a PhD and quantum mechanics. Or, like he, or whatever. he probably could have gotten over it fairly easily after yeah, a, a year yeah. or so. Mm-hmm. Like if his dad didn't like reappear right. and yeah. give him hope. Well, and even his dad's like, hey, man, you got to move on, you yeah. know, yeah. like like oh. I'm here. Catch catch up on life as quickly as you can. But which after is, that, which would have to be one of the hardest things to hear. It's like, it's like, yeah, I know I'm here, but who knows for how long and whether or not I'm even coming back. Right. You got to move on. Right. I know life sucks without me, mm-hmm. but it's going to suck worse. Right. If you keep going the way you're going. And it's jarring for him. And then think about the parenting skills here because he's in subspace. Yeah. So for him, it's just moment to moment yeah but he sees a son getting older and older mm-hmm. and seeing and, how it's affecting him yeah and he has to put aside his you know fatherly disorientation mm-hmm. to try and comfort him oh, oh so good gut-wrenching oh and then like the, the 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 final scene where he is able to go back in, mm-hmm. in time and do all that and he's giving him that massive hug. he's like it's all right now like just the great <sighs> avery books oh man yeah yeah, he he killed in that episode. I mean, oh, but uh, and Tony Todd was phenomenal as the aging Jake Sisko. Mm-hmm. Like the he when he was breaking down and crying to his dad as an old man. Yeah. After uh, he after he basically relived the tale to that student that came and sought him out right. because of his books. Like, oh my god, that was just it broke my heart. Like, uh, there's very few episodes of Deep Space Nine that just truly actually, like, made me cry. Mm. This is always one of them. It's it's only a paper moon in this one. Yeah. Or the two that, well, if you just, just want to see me cry. It's cool. I'm having to fight it back, too. Like, I, Oh, no. It's probably my favorite Star Trek episode ever. But it's, it's one of those yeah. ones that's it's hard to re-watch just because it's that's so true. We, gut-wrenching. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll, like uh, th- that's a lot of my favorite episodes, though. It's just like... Mm. Well, I can, can only be, watch it so many times. And you can't recommend it as someone's first watch. You can't. No, have to, uh, no they have to yeah. know the characters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But my my, my my favorite thing about The Visitor, though, is that uh, randomly uh, we played a show at the Melody Inn one weekend when, like, the Horror Hound convention was going on here. And, it it and, was the the Leonard Nimoy tribute show. Yeah, it was, the, yeah, it was like the week the after week Leonard after Nimoy died. The week after he died. died. Uh, and the horror hound and the Tony came. convention was here. And then uh, we saw a couple of people in like horror hound jackets come in. Yeah. And we were like, Oh, okay, cool. And then Tony Todd comes walking yeah. in and I was like, Holy crap. Which we, we, we met him before. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. And I started the chant from the stage. Old Jake Cisco, old Jake. <laughs> people were chanting along with that. <laughs> That's so great. good. And, 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 and you can see in, in the back of the room, his, his arm goes up like this. <laughs> like making a fist and, I'll breakfast yeah. club yeah. in shot style <laughs> that is great oh man but yeah fantastic episode now on a completely different note uh, still season 4 but episode 8 Little Green Men oh <laughs> oh 
I was just thinking that we should probably address the Ferengi because we haven't really even talked about them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ferengi, they were going to be the threat. They were going to be the oh, new yeah. Klingons. They were the new Klingons. Oh, my yeah. God. TNG. They were horrible on TNG. Yeah. I like. I was I was kind of amazed when I first saw that they were bringing them back for, for mm-hmm. Deep Space Nine when I first started watching. I was like, weren't these like the weird, annoying throwaway yeah. characters? I'm like, Wah. That, that that was one of the things when D Space Nine first came out that turned me off because I knew the Ferengi from Next Gen, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't want the, these are like regular characters. I don't want to see these guys every week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, not only that, but they completely changed them. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. they yeah. made them interesting. Yeah, they were they, they were they were they were a little more cunning. They 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 had more than their laser whips. Yeah, they, yeah. Oh my God, they, they actually had like backstory to them. Yeah, finally, they which, they, they which, gave them a culture. Which yeah. again, with Deep Space Nine, even like the supporting cast and everything, they you could really just flesh out. I mean, they fleshed out an entire race. Mm-hmm. They fleshed out multiple races. Multiple races. Yeah. In Deep yeah. Space Nine, I mean, you fleshed out the Bajorans, the Jemadar, the Founders, the Trill, the like Trill, Cardassians, Cardassians the Ferengi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many. And the um, um, uh, who's the bad guy at the end of the the race? The Breen. The oh, Breen. the Breen. Yeah, we didn't. I mean, really not that they fleshed him out too but, much, but they were just mentioned here yeah, and there. They mentioned yeah. a few times, and they started yeah. showing them, and they looked like that the outfit that Princess Leia, Leia wears. Wore, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the the bounty hunter. Yeah. 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 And and then you know you, you just knew that in season eight they were going to play a big role mm-hmm. and, and be, and they were going, that would be another race that they could explore their history and which their they culture. they never really did. And you, you really learned a little bit about them, but not much, which yeah. I actually, I would like to see on like a future. If there was an eighth season show. of DS9, they would be a playable faction in Ascendancy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's a that the oh yeah, little green men. That's what we were starting yeah. on. But yeah, <laughs> great D, episode. D, D, DS Nine meets every Roswell conspiracy. Yes. Theory. Oh no. It, yeah. yeah, and it was also almost like a Twilight Zone type type episode. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you you kind of get to see like in, instead of like this is an alien autopsy. Oh, these creatures are mysterious. But instead, you get from the Ferengi perspective, like what the hell is going on here? Right. Why? Where are we? When are we? Yeah. Who? What are these humans doing? They're purposely poisoning themselves with tobacco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. There was so much smoking in that yeah. episode. Hey, just, just like the real 1940s. Yeah, exactly. D- doesn't this yeah. human look just like Captain Cisco? <laughs> <laughs> No, this, uh, don't worry. We're, we're, we'll get into another couple Ferengi episodes mm-hmm. later on down the list. But I did love that uh, Quark wound up uh, being able to sneakily convince the one female mm-hmm. uh, female <laughs> into, into giving him Umox. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, did you seriously just trick this woman into giving you the equivalent of a <laughs> just now? It was no, it, it was Nog. Oh, it was Nog that yeah. got it. No, no, Nog Even was like, better. I, I, I think I need you to rub my ears some more. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> Quark was too busy thinking about that prophet and contacting the Grand Nagus yeah. in this time. Yeah. Hashtag me too, Nog. Come on, man. <laughs> also, that's the episode where they officially give a good excuse as to why everybody speaks English. Oh, on Star Trek. yeah, because they had the implant. Yeah, uh, they, they yeah. have the implant in their ear and they're it's not working when they first get there. And they're mm-hmm. like digging in their ear, trying to restart sure it. in TNG. They had the universal translator. They had, well, they, mean, they, 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 they mentioned universal translators, right. mm-hmm. but, but they, they never explained kind of how but, it worked. But they, they never explained how like some, someone can just like, you know, crash land on a planet with some aliens and all they're, they're just standing there in a uniform and everyone's speaking English. Right. Like, it's because there's a thing in their ear that translates for them. Well, but a good example of them not having the implants at the time was, it's a super famous episode, the whole Shaka When the Walls Fell TNG episode. Oh, yeah, what's, yeah. What's the name of that one? That is Darmok. A, yeah, Darmok. Yeah. Dar, Darmok at Jalad and Tanagra. Yeah, okay. But yeah, that's the that's when you kind of think that, you know, maybe the Universal Translator is tied to the comm badge because Picard didn't have his comm badge. Well, to be fair, that's probably what they thought about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, because mm-hmm. another thing you have to remember is Deep Space Nine takes place, takes place in, after. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's a couple of years later. Maybe yeah. they've uh, yeah. improved the technology. And, and going mm-hmm. back slightly to the Picard series, that's why it's great. You can actually display new technology. You don't have to make 
the new stuff look purposely look old, purposely old yeah. but then explain away why it looks good with what, why it looks minus. better than yeah, the original exactly. series. Which again, that's another complaint of Discovery. Everything looks too futuristic. Well, I, I do like the explanations they gave in Discovery as to why the Enterprise looks the way it does. Yeah, you know uh, why they're why, why are they using holograms to pa- speak and then Pike, Pike does away yeah, with the holograms pa- eventually. Pike and, prefers more traditional stuff, mm-hmm. and he he says, "I don't want this." This junk on my ship, yeah. You know, so sure. it doesn't even work half the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, once you once you subscribe to CBS All Access, sure. definitely I might blow through under. Discovery. Yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be a lot like I, I got YouTube Red just to watch Cobra Kai, and I thought I was going to cancel it, but then yeah. I got addicted to the no ads and everything. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe I'll get addicted to CBS All Access. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's and they're coming out with more and more series, and plus mm-hmm. I highly recommend the Twilight Zone, Jordan Peele's reboot of the Twilight mm-hmm. Zone. Oh, I like Jordan Peele. Oof. Yeah. He did a fantastic job of rebooting the mm. series. Wait, wait, wait. You like jo- Jordan Peele? Yeah. Get out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I made Fark laugh. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> oh, us. Oh, uh, let's see. What do I got next? Uh, oh, uh, season five premiere, episode one, the ap- apocalypse rising. This is when we find out that there is a changeling infiltrator on on Kronos within oh, the Klingon Empire. Oh, right. Yes. yes and they yes. have to get dressed as Klingons, go in there, try and expose them because they mm. have the feeling that it is. Uh, yeah, they believe <laughs> that that Galran is the changeling. Yeah. So they have to go and infiltrate it, put up those little sensors to basically kind of like hey, if you, all four of these go off at the same time, it'll just right. it'll turn into a puddle of goo. And, and correct me wrong, it's not Galron, it's Martok. Uh, Martok, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mar- Mar- Martok's the one that eventually yeah. is, has yeah. the missing well, eye. Well, not not yeah. in that episode though. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I thought I thought he was trying to remember which the. No, no, because it, it turns out Galron's not the changeling, right? Right. Martok, Martok is, right. and they kill the that yeah. changeling, mm-hmm. right? Well, and then you go and you find Martok's been in prison, and he's been forced to participate yes. in Jemadar Fight Club, which which is another thing in that series that I I loved mm-hmm. was the, what. Uh, I, I don't know if that episode's on your list or not, but you know I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is uh, when when they in that episode where they go and they and they find Martok mm-hmm. and he's all beat up and missing an eye from all the fights, mm-hmm. and then they find which, ba- which, Bashir, right, yeah. who has apparently been there for a while because he still has the ago. old uniform on, right, yep. and. Uh, one really funny thing about that is the previous episode is the one where Bashir delivers O'Brien's baby mm-hmm. from uh, Kira, mm-hmm. who was carrying the baby. It turns out he was a changeling and the it's entire the, it, time. It's the changeling Bashir because he's wearing right. the new uniform. <laughs> it's, well, he's got to blend in. He can't blow his cover <laughs> on something so trivial. But but I loved that episode where you like that's something that uh, that like most shows wouldn't do is like mm-hmm. you know that character's been kidnapped for a while and you find out that you know the 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 one that you've been watching for a few episodes is a bad guy and and you never knew. Yeah, they never even like hinted right, at it. Right, right. You know, which you know, granted, uh, that, that was probably a decision they made in that episode and writing. not. Actually, no. I mean, only a few episodes apart. They probably had that plan. Oh no, I'm on. sure they yeah. did. But yeah. but but yeah, they they didn't drop any hints. They didn't have no. him do anything like shysty. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's just it's just such a cool thing. And they brought Martok back, and they had mm-hmm. the eye patch, and Martok well, not became. To mention, you get that mini uh, Rocky kind of deal with uh, oh with Worf. Worf, yeah, yeah. They keep beating him down, but he just keeps Come getting on. up and Come on, ringing that bell. That, yeah, that's, ding, ding. Ding. that's also the episode that, that uh, deals with uh, claustrophobia. With yeah, well, oh, with I Garrick. Was, I was yeah. just about to mention that. Yeah, and not to mention, how have we not mentioned Garrick so far? Oh, we're gonna we'll we'll definitely get to Garrick yeah. when we start yeah. talking oh, about so those good. individual. There's characters. so much stuff to talk about with Deep Space know. Nine. Yeah. I, I I seriously could talk for days about the show mm-hmm. is so good yeah but yeah what's what's your mm. next episode well uh, well of course still in season five we get trials and tribulations mm. oh yeah great callback episode oh my yeah. god they, it was done so well and like that was like pretty innovative for the time with all the color matching oh, and everything and just mm. ugh, and uh, so the, well the episode that inspired them to remaster the original series yeah and exactly and do all of that updating and adding all the digital effects. And mm-hmm. Such a great episode. One thing you can say about that episode is 
If you've never watched any Deep Space Nine, yes, you can watch that episode. It's, it's a it's a great bottle episode if you it, are a fan of the original yeah. series, and it will it will introduce you to the Deep Space Nine characters. You don't have to know, know anything deep. about them to really enjoy it. If you, but it's so much better if you do know the characters. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that could definitely be a good gateway. <laughs> yeah, it would be a good gateway episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So, something you could show someone. Like if they're just like. I don't really want to watch any Deep Space Nine. Just watch this episode. Well, right. especially if they're, they're like, well, I like the original series. Yeah. I haven't really watched Deep Space Nine. Ooh, have I got a spot to start you on then? And they go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll like this because they, they go they, somewhere. Right. They have a ship. It's called the Defiant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and also you get to go on the Enterprise with them. What? And on K7. Yeah, and K7 too. Mm-hmm. And uh, that I love... Uh, that they bring back Arn Darvin. Oh, I know and the actual. It's the, it's the, the same actor, Arne Darvin, and yeah. he's he's an old man because he's a Klingon and he would age like a Klingon. So he's an old man. The, the timeline works perfect. Mm-hmm. So and good. That 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 episode is highly inspirational to why I wrote the Tribble song the way I did. Mm-hmm. I think we got our uh, part part of our job done since we mentioned five year mission. Then good deal. Oh yeah, we're a band. Hey. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, season six, episode seven. Had to toss this one on here. You were cordially invited. Oh, the wedding with uh, Jed Zia. Worf and Jed Zia get married. Plus, Jed Zia has to go, has to have her bachelorette party where you get to see Nog do do, do the Nog dance. Do the Nog dance, yeah. (laughs) Which is so good, which he had to do at, Aaron had to do at (laughs) conventions for years and years and years. And he was always glad to do it. Mm. I I think I saw him probably four times do the uh, do the <laughs> nog dance, and that was only the four times that we were around him. Yeah, every single time he hundred percent of the time, yeah, hundred percent of the time that we were around him, he had to do the nog dance at least once. Uh, the, a great episode, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was honestly never that big a fan of Worf and Jadzia as a couple. Hmm. I mean, it's it was an okay choice that gave Worf something interesting to tie him into the characters that True. we already loved. Yeah, but uh, gave him something to do besides battle for honor. Or just go sleep, sleep on the Defiant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or be a bad dad, you know. <laughs> he had to have more character development yeah. than bad dad. And prune and juice. socially awkward. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, season six, episode 10, all I'm going to say is Iggy mother <laughs> pop. The Magnificent Ferengi. I, I love that episode. Oh, it's so, so much. Good. It has some of the best. Ferengi scenes. Well, plus you get like a like a super group of Ferengi. Mm. Yeah. Well, just the best line where uh, Rom in like one of his most brilliant things was like, "Oh, we got to go rescue Moogie. We're gonna gonna get some Nosikins and some Jimadar <laughs> and you know, and then and Cork's like, no." It's going to be all Ferengi. <laughs> oh, I don't like the sound of this, cousin. Yeah. Uh, the one that time was, that was, was a good ROM. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, what sound of this? <laughs> you do do a pretty good ROM. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what, what, that, that, that episode has one of my favorite lines ever in Star Trek, just because of the way it was delivered. Uh, I can't remember the, the guy. The It's, it's the Vorta. Mm. Well, I can't remember his name now. The one oh, that, the, the one Iggy Pop played. No, the other oh, one. Oh, the yeah, one, yeah. The one that they have. The, the, su- the, the super smart me one. Yeah, um, I cannot remember. And I, I love when uh, so- someone's like, uh, they they say something like, uh, I or I really hate Ferengi or, or something like that. It, it was some, but he he goes, truer words were never spoken. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the way he delivers it is yeah. just awesome. I, I laugh well, every time. And it's great that the episode starts off as kind of this like action commando kind of thing. And then mm-hmm. it turns into Weekend at Bernie's. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Well, it, it also harkened back to uh, uh, Spock's brain. Yeah. Because they, they had to like basically make him yeah. a remote control Vorta. Yeah. yeah. And it was so good. And then I loved that it malfunctioned. So we started just walking into a wall <laughs> like he was like it was some like like uh, f- Kivon. That's Kivon. his name. Kivon. Hey, K- that's right. <laughs> We're here for Kivon. <laughs> it's a dead on Iggy Pop, too. That's a pretty good Iggy Pop. Oh, yeah, of course. Season six, episode 13, Far Beyond the Stars. We touched on this one mm. earlier with, of course, <laughs> racism, hardcore racism. Mm. Oh, my God. And so I actually grew up in in Arkansas, right? So mm. 
Uh, maybe not quite the deep south like Mississippi. But I, still, I would consider Arkansas yeah, pretty deep but, south. But still, you hear the N-word quite a bit. Yeah. Whereas when I moved up to Chicago, like there's still a lot of racism, but mm-hmm. it's more like, yeah, don't, don't go to South Holland. That's a pretty dark, you know, southern oh, town. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you get that. I always hate that stuff. weird little racist you, doublespeak. Right. When I feel that's what uh, Beyond the Stars was like, yeah. oh, uh, by the way, Avery Brooks, uh, d- you're going to call in sick tomorrow. You know, because yeah. they're doing the staff photos or uh-huh. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Benny. Yeah. Hmm. And, and that um, we have to change and, the ending to this all being a dream because, you know, we can't have a black man being the main character of this story, you know. Right. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I liked it also. Uh, and it, it, it also addressed sexism, too. Yeah. N- yeah. N- n- Nana's like, I guess I won't be here either. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, because she, 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 she had to use a pen name. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, basically, uh, she's DC Fontana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and then and then like Worf's alter ego or oh, the alter baseball universe player. character, the baseball yeah. player. Like he came in all like hot shot at first and everything like that, mm-hmm. and then he even like makes a point to be be like, yeah, they'll come and come there, buy tickets to watch me play and cheer for me there, but they see me out on the street, they're gonna they're just gonna they're just gonna spit in my face. Mm-hmm. And it still rings true today. That 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 episode. That's another good episode. It's not super. It doesn't really take place in space all that much, mm-hmm. but it still kind of gives you like the heart and soul well, of they, like Star Trek giving its message. They don't really go anywhere in that episode. No, they don't. That, they one, they, that one they don't go anywhere. They kind of stay sure. stay around New York. Uh, I, well, it depends on how you know. It depends on how you want to go with that. They do travel in time, right? It's not space. It's, it's a time yeah. travel episode. Yeah. So, is it, so is it, it's, it's more Doctor Who than it is Star Trek. Maybe, but I mean, <laughs> as Einstein st- said, you know, space and time are one thing, but... Uh, it's all relative. Well, when you start talking about uh, the philosophy, I think that um, you, you just get a lot of um, time kind of uh, philosophy. Like, viewing time is like one thing instead of, you know, a series of moments uh, to moments, whereas... Next generation, a lot of the philosophy on is what makes a person a person. Some more that right, yeah, classical stuff, yeah. But yeah, the DC Nine, D Space Nine, the, like uh, with the original series, they tackled some aspects of the day. It was a little heavy handed, but they also kind of well, disguised it, be, it enough. Well, they had it had to be very covert, you mm-hmm. know, because it actually to get was past the, the censors exactly. and everything. I'm, yeah. I'm half white and half black. You're half black and half white. We're enemies no, yeah. forever and ever. <laughs> And then we're going to do a weird run at the end. <laughs> uh, another thing I, uh, with uh, Far Beyond the Stars, uh, getting away from the, like the heaviness of the, mm-hmm. the theme of the episode, it was very cool to see everybody out of their makeup. Yeah. Just playing yeah. regular right. human characters. Which is nice not to see all the prosthetics on everybody. When, like the first time I saw that episode, when I saw Michael Dorn, I didn't know that it was Worf. Yeah, I, I I was like, who's that guy? Yeah, I, I decided the same thing. <laughs> same thing with JG when uh, when he was on there. I, I I probably saw the episode three or four times before I realized he was Martok. <laughs> like you know, I I just thought, oh, that's just some random actor they had to play right. this this artist guy, whose uh, name in the episode I believe is Rittenhouse. That's true. It is. Yeah, I'm you're, canon. You're, you're famous. Yeah. You are canon. Uh. I had to put this one on here. I don't know what you guys are going to think of this one, but I love this episode. <laughs> Season seven, episode four, take me out to the hollow suite. Oh, I love that. It's a, episode. Good, it's a funny episode. Yeah. All right. That's, a, that's real hit and miss with yeah. a lot of people. Well, I think that it, uh, I think what I love about it is how they stymie the Vulcans that, mm. yes, you're beating us in this. You kick contest, the crap out of us. But and we've accepted that. And we've moved on to we scored one run. <laughs> right. Misfit. They, they celebrate yeah. Rom's yeah. score and like the Vulcans are just so confused as right. to why they're not. Why are you celebrating? Yeah. You've you've lost this match. Yeah. It, I, I love like that episode and the way there, there's there's very few episodes of Star Trek that don't have a problem to solve mm-hmm. or a villain to defeat. And that is one of those episodes where I mean the 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 only problem they're solving is the the morale, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, which isn't really a you know like the episode was just a fun story about them playing baseball, team building. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not not taking something too seriously because I mean it was it was real nice to see Cisco get kind of giddy and excited about something, but mm-hmm. then he turned and 
turned into just kind of a weird dictator mm -hmm. trying to manage the team being like oh you all suck i should just take them on myself and blah 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 <laughs> and eventually he almost had to yeah oh but speaking of uh baseball also loved the episode i'm sure it was way before this one uh the one where uh, Jake and Nog are scheming to get Captain Cisco the baseball card. Yes, the yeah. the, the, the Willie Mays. Yeah, yeah. And, card. and they they, they go trade everything. They, 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 yeah, isn't that the episode where uh, there's a scene where Cisco's just sitting in his office, and I think it's Rom or not Rom uh, Nog mm -hmm. that pops out of like the vent and oh. and, 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 and 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 like looks around and is like, this isn't where I was supposed to be and, and Cisco's just like looks at him and then he goes back into the vent and then they never say anything else about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's not like Cisco comes to find out what's going on. Like, he, what the hell are these kids up to? <laughs> no, he's just like, eh, that, that tracks. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is typical. <laughs> uh, next one I got is uh, season seven episodes uh, eight and ten. Combining two, just because it's a, I, you know what I know I'm what talking about. It's talking about the siege of AR five five eight, and it's only a paper, paper moon. moon. Classic episode again, gut wrenching. Mm -hmm. Now for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. I mean, now that we've lost well, Aaron uh, and everything, so yeah. this going back and watching it, just seeing him losing his leg, going through depression, like having to the horrors of battle. Hmm. Especially well in season eight, eight or five. Yeah, five, the, eight. the siege, siege is such a great episode. Oh it's, my god, it's so saving Private Ryan and Star yeah. Trek. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that you get some great commentary. So Star Trek presents itself as this. You know, we're humans. We've moved beyond this kind of stuff. But then you have Quark, the uh, the nihilist, like, okay, you, you humans are great as long as you got full bellies. Some entertainment on the hollow suite, but mm -hmm. you take this stuff away, you're more savage than Klingons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's so brilliant. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, again, that's like just goes to show like what the human condition mm -hmm. is. It's yeah. like, it's like you take away the creature comforts and you're just reverting back to, right. You know, this is the must protect. Mm -hmm. And I love how at the end of the episode, Jake, you know, rejects being a war hero. He's just like, I was just scared and I just started shooting. I mean, yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's a, that's like a great insight to his character. I mean, because mm -hmm. he wants to become a writer and everything. And he's like, I'm not cut out for this. This is why I didn't want to join Starfleet. This, right. I didn't sign on for this, but mm -hmm. I'll do it if I have to. But wow, this sucks. Mm -hmm. Which is also a doing. great contrast in general, because we had Wesley in TNG, who's like trying to follow in his dad's footsteps. Mm -hmm. And now you have a character, maybe the first one in Star Trek, you know, history that's actively not trying to be a Starfleet officer like yeah. his family. The only other one I really wanted to cover is, I mean, obviously we're taking up a lot of time with this. Yeah. Cause, eh, well, cause again, it's deep space nine. We could talk forever about yeah. deep space we can nine talk for so we could, we could, we could do like a, a five episode arc. Well, there's just one more and that's the series finale. What, yeah. what, what, what we leave behind. Yeah. First of all, I was upset about this. So uh, I don't think it's too much of a secret that the ratings were pretty bad for ds9 towards the end and i remember yeah. at least in my local market in little rock arkansas they were only showing deep space nine sunday nights at like 11 o'clock oh, at yeah. night yeah and i remember i would stay up late and watch it and just be ass tired monday mm -hmm. uh, mornings um but for some reason i think there was a thunderstorm one week and so, uh, like, all the power was out. And so the local CBS didn't air the episode for that <sighs> week or whatever. So they moved it to the next week, which was supposed to be the time slot for What You Leave Behind, part one. Oh. And then they rolled a uh, screen that's saying, we will be showing this Sunday at uh, 11 o'clock. So I decided, okay, they just delayed it a week. But apparently I didn't read the message closely, and it was like 11 a.m. Oh. Instead of 11 p.m. like it had been. Oh, and so I remember I was just carrying on about my, you know, the daily, Sunday, daily life. Yeah. And I came home and my dad was like, oh, yeah, you know, you missed a good episode of Star Trek. It was on this afternoon. I think you would have liked it. And I'm like, yeah, I would have liked to have seen the the series finale of oh Deep Space Nine. So how did, do you remember how long it was until you were actually able to see it? Years. 
Oh my god! Because, like I said, the ratings were bad, and uh, so they never really so re- 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 yeah. rerun it. Oh my god! To be honest, I don't think I saw it until um, it was on Netflix. Wow! Great, great ending though. Yeah, just, just the whole like Goku kind of thing, where Goldicott's like strutting and going like. Who's gonna beat me? I am. And then he like <laughs> all like Rocky here, the dun 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 dun, 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 dun like dun, dun, dun. tackles him and drags him into the fire. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. I mean, it was. It, I think it wrapped up everything nicely. It, it to mm. me, honestly, it seemed a little rushed. Like they were t- it, really trying to it tie was all the bows. Rushed, it, yeah. it was very rushed. It, like you could tell in, in like the last few episodes that they found out the season, the series was not continuing and mm-hmm. they tried to wrap it up. Yeah. And they did a good job. Yeah, like, they did a good like, job. But, but the, like, the you, rush, you they could did a feel good job. that there was, there was more coming. Like the, like they introduced so the Breen and like these other, like it was, there were more stories that were going to happen. There was at least a, an eighth season where it was going to be like some sort of post-World War II analogy where <clears throat> the, the, the Gamma Quadrant's in shambles. We got trying to we rebuild. Got a, we got a Marshall planet. Maybe the Borg are threatening us. So we have to, yeah, you know, band together. I mean, I Something. don't know. Well, have, it, have, have you seen the the, 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 what we left behind documentary yet? No, I don't think okay. I didn't even know there was one. Oh yeah, well, oh, did you know that we're we're on the soundtrack? No, yeah, we're we we, we 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 play. We the, cover the theme, the, the deep okay. deep space mind theme. Yeah, uh, oh, I've, man, I've got a DVD. That. I'll let you borrow. Okay. What the, what they do in the documentary is that Ira Stephen Bear, the showrunner, brings the writers' room back together and they yeah. storyboard out a season eight premiere. Okay. Like where everybody is and everything, and like oh, what wow. everyone's kind of been up to and everything, and like the, how the first scene starts, and it's 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 how it, it, it's like if they were to film it now. Yeah. So yeah. like if, if like if, all the if, all if the, like, the actual actual time is if passed. like fifteen years wow. had gone by. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Give or twenty years idea. or whatever. Yeah. I'll I'll Sweet. I'll let you borrow it. Sweet. Um. I I like the finale. I I you know I I I felt like O'Brien and Bashir kind of got the shaft. Yeah. In, in the finale. Yeah. Um, cause like, but, cause like O'Brien took a new assignment, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He go, he goes back to earth to teach at Starfleet Academy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He go, he goes back to and teach. They, and yeah. they had that weird, like recap of their friendship for yeah. like a minute long. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, that was touching. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the sheer stayed on, on DS9, didn't he? Yeah. I, actually yeah. They, they had a few recaps with different characters, mm-hmm. like relationships. And the one that I was a little annoyed with was, all of the Dax recaps were yeah. were Esri. It's all they Esri. didn't show any Jadzia. Yeah. And like you're ending your show. You had the character on your show for six years. Yeah. I know show that, a shot. I, I, I know that you kind of went your separate yeah. ways. Don't be butthurt because she went with Ted uh, dancing. You know? <laughs> right. Like yeah. like Old when Worf when Worf yeah. has his little flashback with Dax. Yeah. Like you can't show any of the scenes where he and Jadzia were like in love. It had to be the scene where they were hanging upside down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do that. guys. So I'm, I'm amazed that you didn't mention in the pale moonlight. I, I was about to, <laughs> and I was like, I, I was like, oh, I, I, I use in the pale moonlight for my definitive proof that Cisco is the best captain. Well, well it's, it's, this is the, I call this the Alex Jones episode. This is where, <laughs> All the conspiracy theories. Yeah, are like yeah, true. it's they're, they're, turning, they're making gay frogs. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically the war is not going well. Uh, mm-hmm. The war with the Dominion, and they need a new ally. And the only uh, one of the only races left in the uh, Alpha Quadrant. Uh, Who haven't we covered yet? Yeah, the the Vulcans, or not the Vulcans. Sorry, the Romulans. Romulans. The, the, oh, did, the, do, do, yeah. do not let a Vulcan say oh, that you no. confused him with Romulans. <laughs> yeah, the other pointy. They're, they're the only main power left that right. isn't in the war. Right. right, but they have a non-aggression pact mm-hmm. with the Dominion, so they have to figure something else. And who better to enlist? Then plain simple Garrick, oh, right? Gosh. So he concocts this uh, thing. He's like, okay, we're gonna get this uh, hollow chip. We're gonna make this secret recording. We're gonna pass it off to to uh, Romulan High Command and blah blah blah. And Cisco's like, oh, okay, this is a little shady, but you know, maybe we're not over the Prime Directive. Yeah. We're, we're just like, right on. It's not a big we're, deal. We're surfing. We're surfing right. the curl. And of then, the prime and directive. then. Uh, the the senator finds out it's a fake. He's 
it's being pissy. Fake. Yeah, and he's like uh, flying off, and then boom, the ship blows up. Everything falls together into Oof. Cisco's mind. He marches right into, uh, right into Garrick's Garrick. tailor shop, and Garrick's like, "Oh, good day!" And then, bam! What did lays, you do? Yeah, lays him <laughs> out, and like, and Garrick goes like flying over a table, <sighs> and then like gets up, wipes the blood off his lip, classic yeah. style, and like. It, it's almost like a uh, watchman, like when Ozzy Mindias is getting pounded. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, "Okay, wait, 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 wait!" Before you punch me again, I, I'm going to paraphrase this badly. Yeah. You may have single handedly saved the entire Alpha Quadrant, and all it cost you was the life of one crook, one Romulan senator, and the self respect of one Starfleet officer. Now, I'd consider that a bargain. I did what <laughs> needed to be done. That's a horrible yeah. Garrick. <gasps> Which uh, <clears throat> kind of makes me think of another great aspect of Deep Space Nine that the other Trek shows don't really have is character flaws. Yes. Mm. Like, you know, some of them, some of the characters in some of the shows have these minor flaws that they deal mm-hmm. with now and then. But Deep Space Nine, Ooh, like... the doctor has a temper. Yeah, these, these characters have major flaws mm-hmm. that they deal with throughout the whole series. Yeah. And not just in one episode right. like the, here the and there. Like primary and secondary characters. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Picard lives with regret, but Q has a whole episode where he fixes that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and like with, with let's let's use Picard as an example. Yeah. Like he has this this PTSD from the Borg, mm-hmm. but they only deal with it in like one or two, one or two episodes. episodes. Well, in one movie, to be fair, in a movie, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. comes back in a movie. But like, but the, but the, you're thinking again, the, how good were the next gen movies? The, Not very. First contact, first contact is, 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 is legit, the yeah. best Star Trek movie of all time. Mm, you're weird. No, I'm right. <laughs> I have to agree with Mike on this one. <laughs> I question your character, yeah. sir. The Se- line must be drawn here. No further. Second best, Final Frontier. All right. So anyway, <laughs> wow. Picard's de- no. I'm just kidding. Picard's <laughs> dealing with this. You know, like throughout those like three seasons after best of both worlds, it comes up like once or twice. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then that movie comes out. And at the beginning of the movie, there's this horrid, like gory nightmare scene that Picard is having. Like, was he having these nightmares this entire time? And they just never showed it. Like, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. But in deep space nine, like these characters, they deal with these flaws they have on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And they come up in multiple episodes yeah. and, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just better. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. just better. <laughs> and another episode I really love in D Space Nine that you didn't mention is, uh, I think it's called Children of Time. Yes. Where the Defiant gets sent back in time and crashes on the planet and they grow, they, like they all grow old together on the planet and have kids and their mm-hmm. kids have kids. And, uh, and then, the, then they meet them. Oh wait, because uh, it's when uh, older Odo. Uh, yeah, it's is when it, he's like he's like basically like old Odo con- made himself confesses age. his love to Kira. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another great episode. A little weird towards the end, but yeah, it's uh... well at, at the end. Old Odo sabotages Oldo. their 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 plan. Yeah, to keep the timeline intact, mm-hmm. and. And basically kills all those people, yeah. makes them never exist, Odo just so that Kira can live. Odo basically committed like alternate timeline genocide. Yeah, and and like young Odo is is stuck in like the bucket or whatever because mm-hmm. he's he hasn't gotten used to that atmosphere yet because mm-hmm. it's making it's he had to like learn to to live in that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when at the end of the episode, young Odo has no idea. What's that, that Kira knows how right. he feels. Yeah. And actually, what, what's funny is that on the way over here, I was listening to a Q&A with uh, Rene. Uh, how do we say oh, that? Oh, 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 oh Yeah. Apparently, they knew that they were going to get the those two characters together mm-hmm. in season two because there was that episode. I think it was the Circles one where <clears throat> he finds out about her terrorism. And mm-hmm. apparently in one of the daily footage is... He gave he gives her a look, and all the writers are like, "He's in love with her." 
<laughs> and like that's what started that whole uh, storyline. Yeah. So even in season two, yeah. they it's, were. It's uh, a great that. romance. Like yeah. in, yeah. in in shows, it's, it's unlikely, but it's great. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of times, I feel like the romances they put in shows are forced and yeah. weird. Like like mm -hmm. Worf and Dax, I never bought it. Didn't feel right. Yeah, it's just weird. Much. But like Odo and Kira, like that mm -hmm. is one that I rooted for from day one. Like mm -hmm. as soon as they. Like I the, love the only couple that's better has got to be Riker and Troy. Riker and Troy are pretty yeah. great. Yeah, Worf and Troy are not. No, no. <laughs> oh God, God no. I almost forgot uh, about I, that. I, 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 I really love the scene in that episode where uh, it. I forget who it is. Somebody's like kind of hitting on Kira. and Odo's sitting there, and they're just having like a regular like lunch or whatever. Mm. And she like puts her hand on his, and she's like, you know, this is my boyfriend. And like mm -hmm. Odo just like looks at her hand on his and he just has this like realization mm -hmm. and like, you know, I just, I just love that little bit little there. Subtle. Yeah. Yeah. And then like from that moment on for the rest of the series, Odo is in love with Kira. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're missing out some good side characters. What about the Grand Nagus? Oh, the Grand Nagus. Yeah. Well, Wallace Shawn. Actually, because I've, I've been rewatching DS9. Quack! Quack! <laughs> Where's my beetle snuff? I I love the episode where he travels through the wormhole, mm. and the wormhole aliens change his brain, yeah. and then he rewrites <laughs> the rules of acquisition. Yeah. I'm and making it, some big changes, boy. And and Quark has to take him back and and like beg them to fix him. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, he, mourn. Yeah, the strong, silent type. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and of course, of course, that was a, that was a nice little nod to Cheers. Yes, yeah, Norm. Mm. So it's just Norm backwards. Yeah, mm. well, sort of backwards. And then there was the the episode dedicated to Morn when he died. Yeah, yeah. who yeah. mourns for Morn, yeah. which is also a reference to original series. Like, who, who mourns, mourns for, for yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. There's Br Rom Brunt. Oh, Brunt. Oh, FCA, which is an, another, another Jeffrey Jeff Combs, Combs character. character. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, first time I watched Deep Space Nine, I did not realize until after I had finished the entire series that Brunt and Wei Yun were the, the same, same guy. person. I had mm. no idea. I didn't know that. And either. actually, in the Magnificent Ferengi, after I saw that episode, I questioned. I'm like, why didn't they have Wei Yun in this episode? Rom is always has always been one of my favorites. Once he became like a full on like union organizer, yeah. mm -hmm. the workers of the world unite. Yeah. With with Rom comes Lita. That's right, yeah, yeah. and we do we we do love us some Chase Masterson. Yeah, Lita's a, a great character too. Mm -hmm. She was saying, I think I think Lita's one of the one of the more like underrated I, characters. I always loved how she started out being like a love interest for Bashir. Yeah, <laughs> and then they break up, mm -hmm. and then she marries Rom. <laughs> right. My little Rami. Like I always think, like how does Bashir feel? Like in, right. in, in the later seasons, like. Rom got the girl. Hmm. <laughs> to think who else? Of course, we are. We already touched on Kai Wen, hmm. one of the most punchable characters in Trek history. But then you get the combination of Kai Wen and then Gul Dukat in disguise as mm -hmm. a Bajoran, mm -hmm. and they have to read like the the forbidden texts and everything mm -hmm. to like release the the Paw uh, Wraiths. Yeah, the pirate. Oh, yeah. the Paw Wraiths. Once we start getting God, those, we we could go on forever and ever. Man. I know yeah. we really could. We we got to talk about one of the the great characters of uh, Rene uh, Aubergenois. Yeah, uh, you know, recently uh, deceased. He is definitely going to be missed. Yeah, he was uh, he was always such a great foil. Like he like him and Cork's relationship in that. Mm -hmm. That was always one of the those those were some of the some of my favorite scenes to look forward to, mm. just to see those two just bickering back and forth like the odd couple. Mm. Yeah, and they did it so well, and they 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 continued it in like panels that we would mm. see them together on. <laughs> yeah, and they was they would still kind of argue back and forth. People would get so excited when they'd kind of like toss a little jab at each other, like it's just like old times. <laughs> I, I loved how on the show yeah, forget Kira and uh, Odo, like Odo and Quark are the, <laughs> the best couple. That's a bromance. That's that, that's a, that's the best bromance. Yeah, I, I I like how by the end of the series he basically admits that he likes Quark mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that he he's never really like arrested him or whatever because you know they're because they're they friends. friends, right? Yeah. yeah. 
He just likes and, to pick and, on him. And again, Odo had a great story arc too. Yeah, because he was a, he was just always a constable, and then like once he found out that he wasn't the only changeling left, he got so excited, and he was like kind of dedicated himself to trying to find more changelings, and so, then finally they started coming to him. He had he had uh, the his link to walks on a Troy. Yeah, to walks on it. I forgot about that. <laughs> so good, which is great. You know, my. I, I'm not a huge fan of Loxana. She's she's okay, right? But uh, her absolutely her very best episode is the one where they're trapped in the turbo lift, uh-huh. and you get to see her be a real person and not just and not that the, over the top kind of character who always has to put on airs and right. you know, yeah, always you, you looking... actually like the character, yeah, because she says she becomes a vulnerable. Yeah, well, his character is also great. Uh, again, kind of going to that. Uh, uh, pre and post 9-11 stuff. I mm-hmm. mean, he is the race of the enemy and they very much yeah. talk about that. Well, because uh, is it Spurgeon's favorite character is uh, the Section 31 guy, Sloan? Um, I uh, thought I, y'all were talking about that. Like someone had a pin from uh, oh, no, I fan, do. fanpins.com. I do. You know? Yeah. F- fan sets. A, fan yeah, fan sets. sets. Who sponsored this podcast. That's true. Fansets.com. Com, com, com. You're at that again, really? <laughs> <laughs> like I mentioned at the top of the show, show, show fan show. sets is your home for all the pin collectibles you will ever, ever need. need, need they got yeah. everything from Star Trek, of course, the Big Bang Theory, DC Comics, Harry Potter, Alien, Firefly. Oh, my God. There's so many web exclusives right now. They currently have the Star Trek Picard Crest logo from the upcoming Picard series. Serious, serious. And one that I forgot that I'm going to actually have to order. Uh, as you may have seen in the Picard trailers, Picard has a dog. Dog, dog, dog. And dog. they actually made a dog tag made for dogs. Dog, and dog, I myself dog. and the new dog dad of a pit bull. Bull, 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 bull. Do bull really <laughs> needed uh, an echo in that? That, that, that. So head over to fansets.com, place your order. Right now, if you head over there, you can use this code that I'm about to tell you for 15% off your entire order. The brand new discount code for five year mission. The podcast is drum roll, please. Is, is, is. You'll echo, but, but you can't but, do drum roll. But, 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 I can't do a, I can't roll my. I thought you took Spanish. Uh, Gross. <laughs> the discount code to get 15% off your entire order is five year mission. How easy is that? The number five, your mission, all caps. It's that easy. Head over there, put some web exclusives in your cart, put your credit card information in there, buy me something while you're at it, because I need to add to my jacket that I've mentioned multiple times on this podcast, and go over there and get you some. Fan sets. We have character. Character, character, character. And always, we thank fan sets for sponsoring our podcast and every single podcast on the Trek Geeks Network of Podcasts. Cast, 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 cast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, they're, even though Odo has been a dependable ally, no signs of defection or yeah. aiding and abetting, they, they still use him as a conduit to spread a virus. Right. And are going to oh let him God. die. Yeah. Ooh, that was one of the craziest reveals. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like uh, because they knew that he was joining with right. the. Uh, why can't I think of her name off the top of my head? Changeling. Yeah. Did, yeah. did she actually have a name? No, I don't no. Think she, she was she just did. yeah. She, yeah. she was just the the, fe- the founder. female founder, female founder, or female yeah. changeling. Yeah. That's, yeah. But yeah, they, they knew <laughs> who that purposely were... looked like Odo to make him feel more comfortable. I know. I yeah. always thought that was the weirdest thing yeah. that they would always like. They could form in any shape and they were better at being changelings than right. he, he was yeah but they would still but it still made sense his. in continuity no it definitely yeah. did yeah it definitely did but yeah that was the, so messed up that section 31 the way i always them. saw that because in the early like first season he says that he can't make himself look like people i always had trouble with the ears right and yeah. and, and so this is the, the the form that he can make uh the after the, later in the series when they revealed that the changelings look like that i just always kind of assumed that he just didn't know that he the reason he could 
form that image or that uh, form so easily is because that's the form of his race. Yeah. Because that's what they look like when they right. take humanoid form. Mm -hmm. So he just didn't know that, you know, that that's why it was that easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, I, I, try, I try to explain it away to myself. I do that with a lot of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, good? Well, because we already know that some of them are better because they can look like Klingons or right. Chief O'Brien mm -hmm. and all that. So they're yeah. more talented. Yeah. yeah, I did. I did love that his character arc really started like fully forming when, like, like in uh, when they were trying to take over Cardassia. They were helping mm -hmm. the Cardassians take Cardassia back over mm -hmm. from the founders and the Breen <laughs> and the Breen. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and he was basically just like leading these factions of Cardassians doing like uh, covert missions and everything. And he would mm -hmm. like, he was keeping it secret how sick he was from Kira. It's just so right. he, like, she has, she has better things to worry about than me. Leave me be. And he was just looking horrible. Yeah. And he, but he still got the job done. He knew that he had to, in order mm -hmm. to save all of his, all of his friends and the, and the woman that he loved. Mm -hmm. So, and then he just he just kept making those ultimate sacrifices, and then finally, finally gets the cure. But then pulls the ultimate ultimate sacrifice and goes back and helps the founders. But after by, the by, war, though, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was like after they finally were defeated. But even right. like after all the things that the founders had done to the Federation and every everybody else in the quadrant, he was like, "They're still my people. Mm -hmm. I need to go help them." I can help them change. I can help them grow again and mm. not be big buttholes. That's well, boring. He, he, he admitted in that, in the one episode that uh, his biggest secret is that he wants to be in the link. Mm. Yeah. And, and that, that nothing is more important mm -hmm. than getting back to the link. I really enjoyed the, uh, like, in the ha second half of the fourth season and the first half of the fifth season where he's for forced to take human form. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They take away his changeling abilities and, mm -hmm. and, uh, Oh, he's a solid. Yeah. He, yeah. Can, he can actually drink and taste food now mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. And he's just I getting drunk in quarks <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And that, that's actually the episode you mentioned, uh, earlier where they have to, dress up like Klingons yeah. is during that time. Oh, so he, yeah. he had to get the facelift. He couldn't just make mm -hmm. himself look Klingon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that again, theme of fathers. I mean, that's also, he gets his shape shifting power back by raising another, uh, changeling. Oh yeah. That's, that's right. true. Right. I forgot Why? about that. Oh, that, that's, that's when we find out that his name means, uh, Un unknown, unknown specimen. Sample. Yeah. I think, sample, yeah, that's right. I think we actually learned that in season one, but it's a throwaway kind of thing. Yeah. But, but uh, then he like really harps on it too. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was like, uh, then they named me Odo. Right. Well, and, and and it's also great because, uh, he's very resentful to the scientists that, mm -hmm. that raise him. But the scientist is like, look, dude, like the Cardassians were on my ass. Yeah. They would have killed me if I, I had didn't no choice. Do... Yeah. Like, ah, oh, it's so good. Not everyone can be grade A prime dad material like uh, Ben Sisko, you know, so. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, at least more <laughs> wasn't his dad, you know. Well, uh, you know, there's another episode where he's raising another baby, mm -hmm. not just the change. Oh, this is the Jim Hadar. The Jim Hadar oh, baby, right. yeah, which was right. a great episode with Odo and, mm -hmm. and like... Like the reveal that that is a Jim Hadar was another oh, surprising moment for me. Like yeah. I did not see that coming. Oh yeah, because yeah. it was in that wreckage that Quark had bought. Like he just, just yeah, like, like salvaging yeah. for parts. And it what it looked like it a uh, human. I mean, because obviously it's human actors playing it, but yeah. just the the because it what becomes a full adult within a twenty four hour period or yeah, something like, like that? it yeah, only I think it was takes. Like a, I think it was like a week. Yeah, it just yeah, takes something. a few days. But yeah, yeah, man, the, those those dominions are some real fools. <laughs> Well, now you got to bleep it out. Do I? Yeah. Frankie is listening. No. Oh. Hey, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie came in from San Jose with her dad and her mom last week to see a show at Here in Hero House Comics, 1112 Prospect Street, <laughs> Indianapolis, Indiana, Heart of Found Square. But we are going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, Jacob Williams, thanks for yes, joining us. I appreciate it. You want to tell everybody once again where they can find you? Oh, yeah. So, uh, if you're interested in hearing more of my uh, dumb opinions, you can uh, <laughs> go to PunisherBodyCount.com or just search 
Punisher podcast. We're usually the top result. We're an award-winning Punisher podcast. Ooh. We won. We won best comic book uh, podcast uh, at Indie PopCon uh, the Ooh. first year they did their uh, podcast awards. But yeah, we talk all things Punisher, and uh, um, we talk other things here and there. But uh, yeah, toilet so humor from from what you mentioned earlier. Toilet humor, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, everyone that. check it out. I, I appreciate it. Oh, and can I give a quick shout out to uh, Chris Spurgeon? I actually listened to my first episode of this podcast today at lunch, and I okay. listened to the uh, making of the Squire of uh, Gothos. Uh -huh. I, that is legit one of my favorite five year mission songs. Like top. Top five, maybe even. We're not. We're not going to tell three. him that. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. Need he, he's one hundred percent right that it's a sleeper hit. You guys shouldn't be so hard on him. It's a great, <laughs> almost as good as the Cage. I love the guy. Cage is probably my favorite five year mission oh, song. Uh, but uh, of yeah. course, we'll see you in two weeks. We'll be back with another episode, kids. We got a couple special guests coming up in the next next month or so. So stick around for that. Till then. Thank you for listening to this episode of Five Your Mission, the podcast. If any of you are interested in listening to more of our music, you can check us out on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or pretty much anywhere that you can listen to music. Just search for Five Year Mission and we should be the first thing that comes up. If you would like to contact us in regards to the podcast or anything else that you want to talk to us about, you can email us at fiveyearmissionband at gmail.com. And for more information about the band, you can go to fiveyearmission.net and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Well, thanks again to our guest, Jacob Williams, for joining us this week. Hopefully, uh, if you have never watched Deep Space Nine or didn't give it a chance, some of the things that we talked about tonight might inspire you to maybe give it another chance and see how awesome it is. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, it's, like I said, when Cisco shaves the head fully and grows the goatee, that's when he truly starts kicking ass. But which reminds me, one more episode that we didn't mention which earlier that? is uh, one of my favorite episodes. It's called uh, Explorers. It's the episode where Cisco and Jake build that build ancient the ship, Jaboran, the ship. B B Bajoran ship. Yeah. And that is the first episode that Cisco has a goatee. That's true. But he, but he hasn't shaved the head. Yet. Not yet. He doesn't shave it until Way of the Warrior. That's right. And then the way of the warrior is truly when everything starts kick, kicking butt. Yeah. But uh, anyway, D Space Nine, you know, any, anyone can ask us and we'll 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 give them a, a list of episodes they should check out. And you can see this is one of our longer episodes thus far. So and it, we, we could we could we could have kept going. It too. was it's so hard thing. to stop. I, I was prepared to talk for another four hours. Yeah, easily. We I, I you know, I, I was like, oh, we got to cut this t this off and go on to the next thing because. Otherwise, I could talk about this one episode for an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see us at a convention, at a show or something, and you really want to talk Deep Space Nine, corner either Mike or myself, and we could just go on and on. Yeah. Especially... We, we would be happy to go on and oh, on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, if we have the time and we're not trying to get on stage or off stage, <laughs> we will make some time to talk Deep Space Nine with you. Absolutely. Cue the ads. Fan sets, we have character. Make sure to use that 15% discount code five year mission. That's the number five year mission. All caps, five year mission. Save some money. Remember our name. Name, name.